Hi folks, in this video tutorial, I'm going to go through one of the very common job interview questions. This is tell us about yourself. This is mostly an icebreaker interview question that is asked to judge your experience, your communication skills. And often there's no right or wrong answer to this particular question. But rehearsing prior to job interviews can make a real good first impression. So when you ask, tell us about yourself. Firstly, you can summarize your overall experience. This will be very similar to what you had already summarized in your resume. So you could say, I have about five year hands-on experience in building web applications using RESTful Web Services, Spring, Hibernate. And you have also got, say, JMS-based messaging experience. Um, and also you can say, uh, as much as possible, try to quantify, say, you have taken three projects through a SDLC, the Software Development Lifecycle, uh, for a company, say, X, um, XYZ um, in the first three years. And the next year, two years, say, you worked for a financial organization and you've taken a project through um, writing uh, batch frameworks, uh, Unix scripts, and so on. But as much as possible, look at the job specification and try to marry. Say, if you have five to 10 years experience, there will be a lot you can bring it to the table. And you need to streamline your answer to the job specification. So you need to look at what it will be relevant to this particular employer and just only cherry pick those experiences and then bring it out. But if you have only three year experience, then you can bring out um, most of your significant contributions. Um, so you can say, I've got three experience, I have worked with Spring, Hibernate, um, and if, if the employer is asking for anything to do with Jasper reports or drools, then they can say, uh, I'll produce some PDF reports with Jasper reports. If you have applied uh, rules to externalize some of the business rules, you can say you got rules experience and so on. So as much as possible, understand the job specification and try to marry up your skills and experience to the job specification. And as much as possible, quantify. So if you say you have built a mission critical application that handles about 300 concurrent users. So when you're quantifying, it has to be your strength. So when you build applications, so they're using 300 concurrent users, an application that can handle 300 concurrent users is not a trivial application. So, it, uh, so if you had worked on non-trivial applications that are very mission critical, then you can bring out uh, those strengths and your experience uh, in building mission critical systems. Now say that you are a kind of a core Java developer, say with two to three experience, and you are trying to break into say the big data. So now everyone is talking about Hadoop and big data, that's a buzzword. Um, it doesn't matter, it all depends on your interest. If you're really interested in building web applications, um, you can always um, promote your skills in um, building web services and web applications and so on. But there are a number of people who would like to really break into from core Java, it's easier to break into big data and so on. But you haven't got any hands-on experience. But at the same note, there is not much supply in big data as well because it's a fairly new field and a lot of the developers are learning big data and um, big data technologies. So in that case, you can really bring out your strengths in your core Java. And also, uh, it is important that you show that you are really passionate about big data. So in order to do that, you need to show that any certification that you may have, say Cloudera certification or even self-taught projects. So I'm not a big fan of gaining certifications and everything, but I'm a big fan of people taking the effort and showing that effort in the form of GitHub projects. So if you had a core Java developer who had trained, say, for the past three months or six months or so on, 
you had been working on self-taught projects and if you post those projects, create a GitHub account and post those ac- um, projects, then you can also bring that out in your resume. You can say that you have worked on a number of GitHub uh, big data projects using Cloudera. You can download Cloudera, install on your machine. You need at least 16 megabytes memory, but and you can show a few projects on the GitHub. So you can provide a link to your big data projects on GitHub. And also in the interview, you can bring out, say, you are a big fan of um, developing self-taught projects. And you can say that um, the project is in GitHub and you can describe or just uh, discuss briefly about uh, the challenges you faced and what type of projects that you have built. Also, you can approach, there are a few uh, large community organizations that are prepared to take on some voluntary work and they may have some analytical work. So you might be able to uh, build a few analytical results or reports or whatever for them um, using the Hadoop, Spark and other big data um, technologies. So the next, let's move on to the next one. So basically when you are doing answering to the tell us about yourself question, you're not only bringing out your technical skills, but also you're bringing out your soft skills like your communication skills, analytical skills, ability to take initiatives and your attitude. So um, when interviewers quiz you for further questions, make sure if you don't know, you answer that you don't know. So uh, interviewers like people who are humble, um, who handle, who take on uh, criticisms, um, those who don't, you know, uh, speak in a very polite and um, manner. So this kind of additional qualities uh, will be under scrutiny when you're answering. So you don't want to come as an aggressive uh, person and who so who knows everything. So nobody knows everything. The technology is very vast. So if you don't understand something, um, you can say that I don't know much about this, but um, you are keen to learn and so on. So in order to answer this, tell us about yourself. Uh, most companies from time to time, they have quick wins projects. So if you had worked on any quick wins projects, um, then you can uh, bring that out um, in in the, as an answer to the tell tell us about yourself. So you can say recently you had taken on one of the quick wins projects where um, your organization say you are working for a financial organization and the organization you are working for, there was an independent body that was ranking uh, the website for the um, user experience and your company's website was say ranked 23rd out of the 25 possible positions. So you initiated a quick wins project using the say agile uh, development process. So the agile is another big word that more and more companies are moving into. So they are moving into either from waterfall to agile or something called a hybrid, which is combination of agile and waterfall um, development methodology. So then you can say you devised, uh, you took initiative and you devised a say two to three month uh, quick win project. So the quick win project is all about improving the overall effectiveness in a short period of time. So you can say you formed a team of say three to five people, so two developers, one tester and maybe a business analyst or a, a business owner where you went through um, the website, um, you went through the report on the user experience. Maybe you, we hired some user experience consultants or whatever. And you listed about 15 to 20 things that can be done to improve the overall user experience of the website. And then out of those 15 to 20, there could be few things that could take more than three months to implement. So you basically cherry pick those top six or seven that could be implemented within the um, three month period. And then you go ahead and just implement those changes. And then after say um, three months, um, the overall ranking was improved from say 23rd to third or fourth or whatever. So those kind of experiences if you had. So when you're building the, this kind of quick wins projects and when you're taking initiatives, 
you are not only showcasing your technical skills to get things done but also your soft skills to communicate to analyze um, the overall website and to understand where the improvement need to be so you also showing your business acumen um, where things can be easily improved how you can achieve maximum uh, benefits from um, with little effort so these kind of skills will be positively received as well by the uh, prospective employers then the other area you can bring out your strengths i in what i call it through all this website is called the 16 technical key areas so there are a few technical key areas every company face these kind of issues so even though they're not specifically mentioned in the job specification implicitly i haven't worked for a company or a project that hasn't faced these kind of issues so they are for example performance issues fixing security holes fixing concurrency issues so these are some kind of issues when you, if you have to fix it you need good experience as well some of these issues are intermittent in nature they don't always surface for example the performance issues when you're building a simple application it doesn't surface unless you put through a lot of concurrent users or you put through a lot of stress and so on so you need to do performance testing so during the performance testing you will identify some of these um, intermittent issues so if you have experience in fixing these uh, security holes um, performance tuning and so on you can bring that out as part of the answers to this um, tell us about yourself as well so you only have three to five minutes or two to four minutes maximum so don't keep on blabbering about all your accomplishments or you know the specification you only just bring out the key ones um, so if you're an experienced person don't focus too much on your ac academic achievements focus more on industrial strength achievements like fixing these kind of issues taking initiatives um, summarize your overall experience and so on but if you haven't got much experience then you need to bring out some of your academic uh, achievements so after you have uh, done your isolate so the after you have mentioned that you have experience in fixing you know intermittent issues um, and next big thing is the code quality so employees all the employees want specify that you have to be a quote quality conscious developer that is implicit and that's every developer has to be taken quality should take the quality seriously so you could say in your if you have some accomplishments say in, your, in my watchful eyes you i increase the number of uh, unit tests from say 30 percent coverage to about 70 percent coverage that's a big achievement so this only not only shows that you know how to go about writing unit tests using Mockito and uh, any other mocking tools and also but you it shows that you are code quality conscious developer because unless you are conscious about code quality you wouldn't be taking initiative to increase the code quality from 30% to 70% if you have got any experience in um, writing jmeter scripts and doing performance tests that will be uh, a real plus if you had worked on uh, functional testing tools so unit tests will only test a unit but you need a functional testing look like selenium um, or open sta or any other commercial tools uh, to do functional testing and have proper functional testing coverage and you played a pivotal role in working with the testers in setting up this um, uh, functional testing environment then you can uh, mention that as well uh, bad boy is another functional testing open uh, tool that you can use to write your functional testing scripts and also anything that you write with uh, bad boy um, you can also export that to the jmeter and convert your functional testing scripts into a jmeter script to do performance testing as well um, 
SOAP UI is another tool. So nowadays, um, most of the web applications we build, they use AngularJS for the front end and they will be writing a lot of RESTful web services. So you can write uh, SOAP UI based um, testing suites um, to test all the RESTful web services for performance, as RESTful web services for functional behavior. So code quality is another plus. So anywhere you play a pivotal or instrumental role uh, in improving the overall um, software quality, then you can bring that out. The other thing is the environment stability projects. So most companies, even though they keep on improving, continuously improving the environment, so some of the things mm -hmm people do is obviously um, the continuous integration so if you have any experience in setting up Jenkins uh, for continuous integration uh, setting up uh, company-wide uh, Maven repository so rather than going out to the uh, internet for the Maven artifacts companies build um, Maven repositories and also then they implement um, security testing software tools like Black Duck so when you're working with a lot of third-party open source software systems, you need to make sure that you're constantly scanning for any security holes in the third-party libraries. So one of the ways to achieve that is you have your own internal Maven repository, so you can build that, build that within your company. And then you use tools like BlackTuck to continuously scan those third-party libraries um, to see if there are any security breaches or security holes in the third-party libraries. So if you have any experience in those areas, you can bring that out as well. And also the other area is um, environment stability. So from time to time, you have environmental issues, uh, environments going down, environments not working properly. So if you have built some scripts or some processes, then you can bring that out as well. Um, so these are all kind of common um, problems that uh, many industries face and they are safe to bring that out because um, there's a good chance that uh, the place where you're being interviewed for they face those issues and they would like to have somebody who knows how to fix those uh, issues or improve um, the overall environment stability so that will be a real plus for the organization as well. So I already mentioned that you have to really um, come out of your shyness and talk up your skills and achievements, uh, but also make sure that um, you will be quizzed with follow-up questions uh, based on that. For example, if we say that we rewrote the whole uh, batch framework uh, that used to take, say, 17 hours, and then you performance tuned it, redesigned it, and with the modular design, and you introduced multi-threading, distributed caching, you tuned the SQL queries, and say, you revised the database tables um, with proper indexing and so on, and then your whole rewrote batch process took only three hours. So that's a significant improvement and significant achievement, but when you then further drill down on those questions, how did you go about tuning the SQL, how did you go about performance tuning and so on, you should be able to answer. I've got a number of uh, tutorials on how you can go about performance tuning and how to use tools like Visual VM in this uh, website, so you can go through them at your leisure. So overall, um, to these particular questions, you are just show, showing off your technical skills and how you acted as a change agent, you made any changes, you took initiatives, how you acted as a facilitator, for example, you took on the role of, say, um, migrating your team culture from um, waterfall-based approach to a hybrid approach or agile approach. You can say how you went, uh, went about uh, facilitating the overall this migration process. So often these kind of non-technical soft skills are looked very favorably because changing people's behavior is not an easy task. That's why the managers and team leaders and facilitators and change agents are well sought after because technical skills can be acquired, can be learned, 
but non-technical skills takes a lot longer to acquire and also employers like well-rounded people those who have got good technical skills with these kind of additional skills as a change agent as a facilitator to th- keep things moving and make changes so if we have these well-rounded experience in taking initiatives and championing a particular task and taking through and playing an instrumental role in introducing uh, new technologies or code improvement um, quick win projects and so on then you need to bring that out so finally before i wrap it up one of the other key things so in order to prepare for these tell us about yourself there's a technique called sar technique so as an every developer or java professional or whatever it's good to have your own sar technique sheet so in addition to your resume think about sar stands for situation action and result so the sar technique is not only useful to answer a lot of the open ended question like tell us about yourself give me an instance where i showed some initiative skills so tell us about your most satisfying project that you had worked recently tell us about some of the challenges that you faced technically and non technically so most of these non technical questions and also to write your resume the sar sheet will immensely help so what the sar sheet is all about is you write a situation you write the actions that you took or your team you took as a team and the result and then what do you do from the base on the sar technique you can answer to a lot of the open ended questions like tell us a project that you are most proud of and you can pick one from the sar technique and you can explain or if you want to write a um, resume you can convert a sar into a single sentence for example say you worked on a mission critical uh, application that was handling say 400 to 500 concurrent users and it was having a performance problem so the situation is a performance problem where the application server had to be restarted every day then what are the action so the first step you do in any performance issues is it should be reproducible so you need to have a re uh, jmeter script that say simulate 300 concurrent users hitting the system so when you have 300 users hitting the system you basically simulate the problem and then you need once you have identified or once you are able to reproduce a problem consistently with the jmeter script then you go and identify the cause or you will be using tools like jvisual vm or any commercial uh, profiling tool so the profiling tool will tell you any deadlock issues or any cpu or memory footprint and so on and then once you identified say the problem was in this case due to leaking database connections and then what do you do you go and fix the code you say in you know, a try catch finally block you make sure in a finally block you close the database connection so because the database connections are scarce resource if you don't close them properly they a lot of the connection will stay open and eventually it will call performance issue so every second or third day then you might end up restarting the web application server and then you might be doing any additional tuning so you will be using jvm heap memory tuning your garbage collection tuning and so on to improve the overall um performance of the system and then you will be running your jmeter script again and make sure the performance issue has gone away and what's the result so then we have looked at the situation action and the result is the application has become a true mission critical system you didn't have to really restart so only time you have to restart is when you do a next release or next version you release it in 2 months 3 months or whatever so it becomes a true mission critical system so that's one particular performance tuning is a sar technique so you have written down the situation you have written down the action you have written down the result now then you can easily bring this out to any of the questions say tell us about what you are most proud of and if you think that's th- something that you are most proud of in spending 2 to 3 weeks in fixing a uh, mission critical performance issues where a company's um name was on the line and 
all the managers and everyone is is kind of in most cases when you have production issues it's a very pressurized situations and your managers will be behind your back uh, chasing you on uh, progress very, very frequently so so if you had taken one to two weeks to go through overall uh, issues and fix them it's a real plus so and also you can mention this in your resume as one of the achievements in the very first page itself because mostly your resumes are scanned only the very first page is uh, really read so if you don't capture the attention of the prospective employer in the very first page with achievements like this they're not going to read your resume um point by point so you need to really capture the attention in the first half a page or a first page itself if you don't do that your remaining pages will be really scanned and it won't be read properly so this our technique then you can say um, in your resume that you came uh, basically you um, in an application you can say performance tuned a bad job that used to take say um seven hours to run um you reduced it down to say three hours so it has to be because you can't elaborately write in your resume it has to be succinct it has to be uh, short uh, with action verbs then you would expect in the interview question so this arouses the curiosity of the um the person who is reading your resume and in the interview then you will be quizzed how did you go about uh improving the overall process you know, how did you make the application the true 24/7 type application then you can elaborate on that so this where the sar technique is good is more like it it goes through your overall um experiences and bring out uh, the key performance the the key achievements that you are proud of and then you can really use that to market your skills in the job interviews and your resume So another example if you want to look at it as I mentioned before quote quality is very important. So in your resume so this sar technique in your resume can become for example in my watchful eyes increased the number of um unit test coverage from 40% to 80%. So in the sar sheet what you're doing the situation is that the java code you were looking at is very hard to maintain. and you try to make some changes so obviously in any project you'll be doing enhancements so you try to make a change in one area and another area was uh, breaking so that shows that the code wasn't uh, written in a proper object oriented manner or it wasn't right written in a very maintainable manner with a lot of code duplications and if else statements and so on so what's the action you will be doing first so firstly you need to make sure that the bad code that is written has got proper unit test coverage because you can't really go and refactor it because you might worsen the situation and you might change the functional behavior of the overall code and so on so if a badly written code doesn't have proper unit test coverage the first thing you do is try to increase the overall unit test coverage then you will go and implement some code coverage tool like sona cube or cobetura to make sure that it gives you a report on the coverage and also the sona cube can give you some code inefficiencies like it can show you where the code uh, duplication is it can tell you where there a lot of redundant codes are and it can give you a lot of code metrics so you can go through and implement those recommendations so and the next thing is you go through the refactor your code so you do piece meal by piece meal you go and implement the uh, o technology or a uh, functional programming or and you will be uh, deduplicating your code so make sure if some logic is duplicated in multiple place uh, you will be removing those duplication and you will be going through any if else statement so that's a real code smell so if you have a lot of nested if else uh, blocks and then you will be changing that to object oriented way and you'll be applying certain design principle like open close design principle or whatever uh, replacing the if else statement with open close and then finally you will be making sure the functional tests are not broken so in addition to the unit test it's also a good idea to write some automated functional testing script as well if you don't already have it proper functional testing coverage so you can after you have done your code refactoring you can go and 
um, write your functional test and make sure um, you haven't compromised any functionality of the code during the refactoring process. And also you go and write your unit test. And then you can say the result is the application became easier to maintain, extend and reuse. Uh, the code coverage was say increased from 27 percent to say 76 percent so that's another SAR based achievement and they can also mention that in your resume as well the third thing we have already covered any quick win project so the situation is the website was ranked 23rd and action you went through a few things and um, you picked the top four things to implement and how did you go about implementing it? You used the agile process, um, the daily stand-ups because it was a short project um, and that will be your action and the result will be much improved ranking of the overall user experience. The next thing you can do is any concurrency management. So that's another key area. So for example, say your production ready uh, application when you are profiling the application, you notice that um, the CPU usage was very less, say 30%. So if you're not properly using the CPU, you're not really taking the full potential of the CPU, your application might be slow and so on. So then you can say how you monitor the CPU usage with the tools like Visual VM. And you can say how you took some thread dumps. So you can do thread dumps every 66 seconds. You can press Control, Alt, Delete, or you can uh, put Kill minus three um, on Unix machines to do some thread dumps and you can analyze those thread dumps in different tools like Visual VM or other thread dump tools to see whether there are any deadlocks or whether and then you can go and fix those concurrency issues say by reducing the granularity so you might find you might have put a lock at a method level as opposed to on a granular uh, sorry you are put it on, on a method level as opposed to a block level so you might uh, reduce the granularity of the synchronization. And then also you can look at some offending SQL statements or some IO operations uh, that might be taking too long. And then the result is much improved uh, CPU usage. So you went from say 45% CPU usage to say 88% CPU usage. There's another SAR technique that you can bring out is all about is design. Say for example, you're working on an application um, that are subject to uh, the business rules are likely to change every year or more frequently. For example, the tax laws. The tax laws changes every year. Say the tax bracket percentage might be 30% and the next year might be 35%. So it's, it's a bad idea to put the tax brackets and things like that um, or, or any other compliance. So, so industry compliance will change from year to year. So any compliance rules, say financial industry have they have to adhere to a number of compliance rules and those kind of business logic change very frequently and they need to be externalized. You can't embed those business rules into your code because then you need every year or every six months when these kind of rules change, then you need to change your code very frequently. So one solution for that kind of stuff is to externalize those business rules into a database or a spreadsheet. There are tools like Drools that allow you to externalize these business rules. And these business rules are executed from these Drools. So your application will be making use of Drools. And very quickly you can change rules. Say if certain um, compliance rule or a particular tax bracket change happens, you can just make a change to the database or the spreadsheet is running against. Um, so you can quickly turn around those changes. So if you have any of those experience in externalizing business rules, then you can mention that. Then the next very common thing is, in addition to uh, identifying security holes with tools like um, QuickFish from Google or Tamper Data plugin, the Firefox has a plugin called Tamper Data that will allow you to tamper your um, header, HTTP headers and post request. So you can easily tamper your get requests in, in the query string URL, you can change. For example, one of the things that I did in the past is I, the one of the new applications that I was working with, 
I went and changed the after the user has logged in I changed the account number from user 1 to user 2 and then I was able to get into the user 2 a separate users account details which is a big breach of security so these kind of things um, if you're an experienced professional you can just you know change around some of the key parameters in the URL and you can identify those security holes and then you can proactively take it to your team leader or uh, to your architect or whatever and then you can take permission to go and fix it so these uh, skills uh, this kind of experience and proactive nature will be looked upon very favorably so if you want to do uh, the same thing to post um, tamper your post data say um, a user account with one two three and you try to change it to another user to make sure that the system should not allow you to look at other people's accounts and so on so you use the tamper data plugin um, to change those post requests and see if there are any um, security breaches. The another thing I've seen from time to time, a lot of the team members struggle and where you can really stand out is um, debugging SSL issues. So most of the RESTful web services and everything, it's, a, it's industry standard that has to be SSL enabled. And working with SSL certificates and trust stores and key stores, uh, it's not a, something that people do every day, but when you have skills to do that, that'll be a real plus. And if you mention that in uh, job interviews and also in your resumes, um, if you have experience in taking SSL debugging tools like OpenSSL or another good tool that I've seen is SSL Poke is a good tool to identify and fix uh, SSL issues. Then overall, you can mention any other technical capabilities like if you built a system, for example, uh, recently I was involved in a system building, um, it, it's like a, not a run of the mill kind of project. So run of the mill project is something that you work on a building a web application and building restful web services and so on. But this one was talking to say 3000 plus uh, petrol sites. So the petrol sites talking to a server back in the office and then from the server talking to uh, payment gateways and so on but the key thing about this is it low, uh, talks low level protocol like TCP IP protocol so uh, it's not a very common thing that uh, you write so you can bring this out as a real technical strength so if you're able if you have worked on writing low level um, protocol applications like using TCP IP um, or using um, non-blocking I/O frameworks like Mina. So Mina uses TCP/IP um, to talk to multiple petrol sites, and then you are integrating with things with some enterprise service bus tools like um, Web Methods or Tipco or whatever. So some of the commercial tools, um, not many uh, developers have experience or get opportunities with. So you can stand out from those developers by mentioning any commercial tools that you have experience with data stage, IBM data stage and so on. So, so then that will be a, another SAR um, situation action result kind of thing. You can write it, what you did and um, how did you. Uh, so this is basically writing a TCP IP based application to do a um, um, FPOS type of transaction. Uh, is kind of a low latency application because your customer when he was paying for petrol and who wants to scan and who wants to get out of there he wants to the transaction to happen real quick um, so you can say how you went about implementing this low latency applications using non-blocking IO uh, based frameworks like Mina and how uh, the payment gateways were used to complete the transaction and so on so these are some of kind of um, experiences that you can mention that you are proud of and also in your resume and finally you can also mention a lot of the process improvements how uh, it can be at the agile scrum process test driven development behavior driven development uh, mentoring junior developers setting up the overall environment system environments um, improving the stability of the overall environments improving the documentation of the um, overall application and process. In agile environment, you don't 
uh, do a lot of documentation but documentations are important it has to be short and sweet don't write 30 pages or 40 page document it has to be short and useful so all those process improvements so we have covered a lot and uh, you can leisurely go through so in um, and if you go under icebreaker interview questions and answers on the right hand side section um, under icebreaker interview questions and answers uh, these are the some of the questions that you need to jog your memory so under icebreaker I've got 15 icebreaker interview questions and answers so it's not only tell us about yourself there are a few other questions as well uh, open-ended questions and also then I've got eight real life uh, SAR technique examples that we discussed and also there are a few other things that industry related stuff you can quickly brush up your knowledge before you go to your uh, job interview and also there is a one other important thing is you have a uh, refresher productivity. So often when I go for an interview that I might have used about 30 to 50 different tools. But if you haven't re used a particular tool recently or something, it's, it's easy to forget about it. So uh, list some of the key commercial tools as a developer, commercial and open source tools that you'll be using, say, for example, Visual VM, your kit to do Java profiling, Hibernate, IntelliJ ID, SOAP UI, some Postman tools, Jasper Report, ITEX, Sona, Snappy, and so on. So, whatever a developer might need from time to time, so the full list of um, debugging tools, um, say Kobechura, Black Duck, and so on. So, you can refresh and jog your memory um, prior to going to an interview. So that's all for this um, video um, and thanks for listening.